and good morning from the waterfront at Waterford and uh, I've had a lovely time here uh, only just one night a quick in and out but I really enjoyed the city of Waterford and uh, yeah I had a lovely walk up by the river yesterday evening and then uh, a very pleasant uh, Japanese meal yes I can highly recommend it uh, especially as uh, they seem to have a public works thing here where they sponsor people to do big pictures on the walls of various buildings especially if they're left unused and actually that really adds so much colour to the back streets of town just up there and yeah as I'm talking now no doubt you're seeing a few of the photographs I took earlier and uh, yeah it's beautiful Anyway, today I'm going to be going up to Dublin from Waterford on the 11 o'clock train and the station is over there on the other side of the river so we're just going to walk over and then get the train. Uh, probably, I'm, I'm guessing it'll be on a class 22,000 DMU which I've ridden before so no surprise with the rolling stock I suspect but I'm really looking forward to uh, an interesting ride up uh, through the, um, the Irish countryside. So. Come along and uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, it certainly isn't a great walk across this busy bridge to the station, although you do get a nice view of the river. And here's Plunkett Station. Well, there's been a station on this site since 1864, although, of course, what we can mostly see from the road is the newer station that was opened in 1968. Obviously your 21st century eyes may not approve of this 1960s exterior, but it's worth waiting on your judgement until we get inside. Many of the original eight platforms are now given over to car parking, as Waterford essentially has just one operating platform, which, in a nod to the past, retains its name as Platform 5. Let's go round the back to see what's left of the original 19th century station. Well, these brick buildings look original and when we duck around here, we can see the old Platform 3 is now also given over to car parking. But there still is one through platform, Platform 4, with the old line that extends out to Ross Lair, which was closed to traffic in 2010. Well, stepping inside, I think the station redeems itself there's a ticket office, a small shop, some toilets and a lovely open staircase to the offices above. The double height windows and the checkerboard floor are wonderful. What a lovely light and airy space this is. As we get called forward we get a little peek at platform 4 before swinging round to see our class 22,000 DMU which was built by Hyundai Rotem in South Korea between 2007 and 2012. But I'm going to walk up to the other end, mostly because I want to take a closer look at this signal box. And wow, this is the central signal cabin which was opened by the Great Southern and Western Railway in 1906 and was still in use until 2014. Right, this view of the train and the signal cabin will do for a thumbnail, so let's hop on board. And up here at the front is the defunct onboard cafe, which I doubt will ever return to use. So let's spin round and work our way back to the seat. Well, there's toilets in most of the vestibule ends. And as we enter the cabin, we can see these intercity trains are all standard class and in a two plus two configuration with a mix of table seating in the center with airline seating towards the vestibules. And at the carriage ends, there's also luggage racks for larger items. The wide windows, the glass-bottomed overhead racks, the leather seats and the lighting make for a very pleasant cabin space indeed. And here we are at my reserved seat, a forward-facing airline seat. You can select your exact seat when purchasing your ticket online. So if you've not seen any other of my Irish journeys on the 22,000s, let's just recap with a quick seat tour. Legroom is decent for standard class and the blue tray table is quite ample and sturdy enough for this journey. And here's what I think are the original three pin plugs from when it was manufactured but there's now also a couple of additional USB chargers. The side of the coach does curve inwards towards the bottom so my right foot has slightly less room. There's retractable armrests and although the seats are quite upright they come with lots of lumbar support. So these are really excellent standard class seats. 
Please, can we have them on our 800 series trains in the UK, please, please? Up above, the electronic display indicates the reservation status, but there's no blind or reading light or coat hook. But the overhead racks are generous enough to fit most carry-on size bags with ease. All in all, a very nice product. Maybe one day they'll turn that signal cabin into a holiday cottage. So on today's journey, we'll leave Waterford Plunkett Station and travel north through Thomastown to Kilkenny, where the train will reverse. It will then proceed to Carlow and Athai before joining the main Dublin to Cork line at Kildare. And then, after one more stop at Newbridge, we'll run non-stop into Dublin-Houston. The approximate distance for the journey today will be 178 kilometres, or about 110 miles, and we are scheduled to take 2 hours and 16 minutes. And as it's quiet, I've hopped over to the other side so that we can get a little view of the river as we pull out of Waterford. The line to Clonmel and Limerick peels off to the west, staying with the river, but we carry on north to Kilkenny. But before we get to Thomastown, there's always time for a couple of ghost stations. Well, County Kilkenny is looking lovely on this April morning. Just before Thomastown we get a little view of the ruined Jerpoint Abbey and then we head out across the Thomastown Viaduct which was built in 1850 with a central 200 foot span being made of wood. It was replaced 27 years later with an iron bridge. And the luxury of two platforms at Thomastown is now a distant memory. Not only do we reverse at Kilkenny, but as we are running on a single track, we also have to wait for the incoming service from Dublin. And here it is. And now the line ahead is clear, we waste no time in heading out under the bridge to continue our journey. And at the Lavistown crossing, we enter the triangle that puts us on the northbound track for Dublin. And we cross the River Barrow on the Bagnalls Town Viaduct, which dates from the 1840s. And then we pull into this charming little station, which was reopened in 1988 after being closed to passengers for 25 years. Wikipedia states that this granite station still retains many of its original features. And soon we're speeding through County Carlow on our way to the county town. So let's pause a moment to consider the ticket price. I bought my ticket a couple of weeks in advance and paid just €12.39 for the low tariff. There are two other price bands that allow you more flexibility to alter your travel plans. We will shortly be arriving at Carlow. Please mind the gap. Thank you for travelling with your Air. Carlow Station from 1846 is another very attractive Irish station. But it's far from being the oldest structure in the area as just outside the town is the Brown Hills Dolmen, which is a megalithic portal tomb that's over 5,000 years old. And as County Carlow blends into County Kildare, the fields are looking suitably Irish green as we press on northwards. 
This old bit of line is all that remains of the Wolf Hill Colliery branch that was opened in 1918, of which a short section remained open until 2005 serving a cement factory in Athai. I must say, as we pull into the station, it just looks like it's a car park. But it's on leaving that we see the balustrading that would not be out of place on a country house's terrace. And just as the M9 from Waterford has merged with the motorways from Limerick and Cork into the M7, we pass under the motorway and merge with the railway lines from Limerick and Cork. We are much closer to Dublin now as Kildare not only has intercity services but is also on the Dublin commuter network. And on days when there's racing there is also a shuttle bus from Kildare station to the Curra Racecourse. And now we're on the dual track to Dublin, our 22,000 class can stretch its legs a bit, or maybe not. Oh well, maybe things will improve after Newbridge, we are now 10 minutes late. And now it's a non-stop run to Dublin, just 27 minutes away. And as we cross the Liffey, we are definitely finally picking up some pace. Adamstown is a massive new build development on the western edge of Dublin. And once again we get a view of the lonely Platform 10 standing all by itself on the loop line to Connolly Station. Although there are trains that pass the platform, I can't find any services that are actually scheduled to stop there. Do let me know in the comments if there are any. And we finally come to a stop at Houston Station just six minutes late, so that's not bad. And that's another great trip on a class 22,000. And at 12 euros 39, I think it's also excellent value. Well, it's turned out a beautiful day in Dublin and under the Houston train shed, the light is really lovely. And I hope you've enjoyed this springtime run from Waterford to Dublin with Irish Rail. And if you have, then please give it a like. Also, if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel as I release a travel video every Friday with some bonus ones on a Monday too. And if you subscribe, there's less chance of you missing one. But for now, from Dublin Houston Station, it's goodbye and thank you very much for watching.